Welcome back to Nerd Crave. Today I've got a special guest for you, the world's greatest extra, Jesse Heyman. Welcome, Jesse Heyman. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Aaron. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. I've been following your career since about the middle of the Chuck run. Uh, I uh -huh. found out who you were during one of many late-night chatting sessions on uh, Zach Levi's website, The Nerd Machine. I don't right. want to make this interview all about Chuck, but I would very much like to know about your experiences as Fernando in the Bymore. Well, it was five wonderful years working as uh, Fernando on Chuck. We uh, got together and hang out like a cast and crew like we're just friends like they treated me like and the rest of the extras like a bunch like we're part of the family and that was a great camaraderie and i miss it very much i wish i was still working on it today uh definitely with everything going on it would be a nice thing to be working on uh you don't get many opportunities to be a steady uh actor on a show let, let alone a show that so many people loved and there's no reason that it got canceled you appeared in, what, 30 or 31 episodes of the show. Is that the most well, uh, time that you've spent on one project? or? I, I think I just appeared on TV on the screen for 30, 37 episodes. I worked on almost every episode of every season. There was one uh, 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 a span of shows where I missed because I was working on a movie uh, but, uh, I was on it for the, for, for the most part of every, almost every episode where they needed something to be happening in the buy more. I was one of the ones called in to be there. Really? Uh, and I really enjoyed all the late night, uh, uh, Friday night shoots that which we would work until Saturday, early morning. We'd call them Fridays uh, on set and they would always bring on like really fun or tasty uh, craft service. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. People were absolutely crazy about the Buy More segments of Chuck. For a while, the, the fictional Buy More was actually trending on Twitter as one of the top places that people would most like to work. Tell me yeah. about the actual set. Was it, like, so many things in Hollywood? Was it smaller than... No. Uh, it was not small. Not it, small. It, not small. It, it was about as the size of this... It looked... You... It was the big, it was uh, the giant sound stages at Warner Brothers Studio. So Warner Brothers is where they shot the Hangover movies and they shot uh, uh, ER and Friends and, and all yeah. these shows, Big Bang Theory, which I also worked on. And, um, and Chuck, we were shooting on stage 11 and it was a huge stage. And, they, you know, stages at Warner Brothers, they're big enough they can had the capacity to have a swimming pool in there if they needed. But uh, our stage is, was huge, and it was large enough to have a full-scale feeling uh, electronic store in there. And it felt it really felt like every time we went into work, it felt like we were walking to a Best Buy. Really? See, I yeah. was at the Warner Brothers lot uh, maybe four or five years ago. Uh, I didn't make it there during the filming of Chuck, but I uh -huh. did see some of the other sets. I saw the... Uh, uh, the Big Bang Theory uh, living yep. room set there, yep. and it was it was shocking how small it actually was. And then, but then I saw like Ellen's uh, soundstage there with the you know, and it's it it was big. But when you see those shots uh, of you know Ellen, uh, you see them panning across the crowd, and it looks like there's hundreds of people there, but it's actually a lot smaller than it seems. So well, you, you have to think about the scale of the show that you're talking about. If you're talking about Big Bang Theory. You know, it is a show about these people living in in an apartments, and and you have to think about the size of apartments in Los Angeles. I'm in an apartment right now. I, you know, you, you can't see the full size of, but I mean, there's like a living room over here. There's a, a kitchen is behind my TV. And over there is my bedroom, and and there's my bathroom. I mean, it's it's not not as big as say you know a house, but it's it's my cozy apartment, and I love it. You know, it's. Yeah. You think about, and then the size of uh, Ellen, I mean, she's got to be, her show has to be expanding the whole globe and have like a global audience. And they, they show the whole soundstage and, and the show isn't all just about the, the who there she's interviewing. It's about the scale that she's broadcasting to the world, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, Jesse, tell me, uh, there were so many great people on Chuck, uh, you know, you mentioned Adam Baldwin and Sarah right. Lancaster and obviously Zach Levi and Yvonne. Tell me some of your memories of working with these great people, Joshua Gomez, uh, you know. I, I've got to work, I got to work a lot with uh, um, 
uh, Big Mike and, uh, you know, Mark and Lawrence, yeah. Mark Lawrence. Yeah, I got to know him a lot. I went to his stand up shows and we supported each other and other things we were doing. Uh, Scott Krinsky, I got to work with him on another film uh, a couple of years after uh, working on Chuck. Uh, it's just it's just awesome. Like we, we were both in Transformers 3. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's just uh, everyone is so was so nice. Josh Gomez invited me to his house a couple of times. Zach, I was into his house a couple of times. Uh, it just, it just, we're, camaraderie is something that you, you, it's almost like, you know, it, these, these people are your family away from a family. When, and when you're living alone in Los Angeles, it's really nice to go to work and have a family of people to hang out with all day. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, and I got to meet some amazing actors. Uh, Chevy Chase was there, you know, Linda Hamilton, uh, yeah, you know, awesome. and uh, I got to hang out with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who I have a still have a picture of with on my on my wall right now. I mean, it, I was a I'm a huge nerd of wrestling, professional wrestling. I grew up. I've been watching this since WrestleMania four, and then here comes. Stone Cold Steve Austin right onto the set of Chuck, and I got to hang out <laughs> with him and work with him and meet him, and, yeah. and it just it's just awesome and just and he, and like I was able to like tweet at him after the show. I was like, hey, it's great work with you, and he tweeted back at me like, hey, Justin, no pleasure. It's like that that's the stuff. That's kind of camaraderie that I live for. It, it's kind of you know as as much as we do this business for for money and for fame and all that stuff, it's really cool to be famous among your peers and people that actually other people want to talk with you and other that they, they talk about working with you on other sets and that's that's how kind of how my my whole career has gotten going as far as it has gone because people talk about me and that that feeling of admiration and wanting to work with them again is is awesome yeah so tell me about yourself tell me about jesse Heyman. what made you decide to get into the acting scene and what was your first kind of big budget project that were that you were that you were on would it be american pie 2 or like where did you, yeah. where did you get started i got started i signed up for a company called central casting in los angeles it's in burbank uh it's they've been around since like 1925 casting films in los angeles yeah and um that's where you go i mean they they have cast many tv shows many films many commercials uh music videos uh i when i first moved to la my first job was not acting i was doing uh like administrative assistant work at a video duplication company right. that make, makes all those infomercial videos that you see at late at night and as as fun as that was i was like nah i, I kind of don't want to do a desk job i want to be on set yeah so i i i got i I, in long story short, I lost that job, and my parents said, "You okay? Well, you have thirty days. We'll find a new job or come back, move back to Texas." And I thought, "Well, I'm gonna do my best." Uh, and now, twenty years later, I'm still in LA working as an actor. And I start, I started up at Central Casting the day after they gave me that ultimatum, and I uh, signed up. And I was working that night. I worked out a film called Rat Race, and I've been working ever since. And uh, I awesome. I honestly did not expect it to be my career. I did I thought it would just be something that I do on the side, and find another job and do something for, that's more of a real job. But this turned into a real job, and after I got cast, kept getting cast in things, and uh, I, I'm just it's just a blessing and an honor for me to to keep playing young and playing high school kids and playing I you know Journey of Arcadia. Uh, uh, American Pie Two, uh, uh, Malcolm in the Middle was were some of the first shows that I worked on, yeah. uh, and then I started getting uh, opportunities. Like I went for an open call for Old School when I got it, and I was one of the main pledges and got a credit at the end of the movie. So I mean, yeah. that's you really can't. I I think a lot of my career is just from word of mouth from other people yeah. who have met me and wanted to put me in their shows. Can you tell me a little bit about the recent knock block video? It's one of the funniest things <laughs> I've seen recently, and you have quite a bit of dialogue in it. It's I a, do. It's not an extra role. How much fun was it's that? It's not to an shoot? extra role. I think it was 
just a banana. Let's hope that's the worst thing that happens. Do it, Dwight! Okay, people. Glass? No! Veneer? No! Particle board, plastic, rock, metal, fish hooks, all those aluminum cans that you have in your freaking closet? No! It has to be real freaking wood! And there's less of it every freaking day! Don't risk it. Get yourself a knock block and let me control your destiny. It's the only insurance policy you'll ever need. They paid me $10,000 for that. We've wow. not. Uh, they flew me down to Austin, Texas for that. It was definitely one of the coolest things I've done in the last couple of years uh, because uh, – it, it just came out of the blue. I've had uh, a smattering of things come just come out of the sky and say, hey, yeah. Jesse, we want you for these things. I've been flown to Germany just to be up here on a game show. I've been done. Uh, I'm about to tell you a story about um, I, I worked with James Franco on Spider-Man. Yeah. And and then a, he shot me, in, directed me in a commercial. And then he he flew me down to Mississippi to be in a, in a film that he was directing. So That's people really like cool. to work with me. And they find when they finally they want to they want to snatch me up before someone else can get me. So uh, <laughs> I, w I was happy to do this knock block. Knock block is just a product to, within a product. They the idea of the commercial was to, was to promote that any product that you come up with you can use this company to promote that product. Yeah. And I was just like a superficial uh, ad that they made for the knock block, which is this which is a real product, but I mean. I don't know how many people actually got the thing, you know, and it's not my, it's not my responsibility how many people get the thing. It's, I just have to become the character and, yeah. and show off the knock block. And yeah. I, I just had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. It looked like a lot of fun. It was, you know, quite an entertaining video. So what's the coolest thing you've done since Chuck? I mean, you, you became a bit of a, a household name with those GoDaddy Super Bowl ads and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there was only one, but yeah. Well, I guess, the, yeah, the, just the one, but I've seen so many different video clips of it and all the different takes right. and the uncensored version and stuff, so it seems like maybe <laughs> okay, more, than yeah. it, more than it was. Right, but, right. Uh, uh, so I, I what's, think, I what's think the favorite thing you've worked on since well, Chuck, really? I, I think the, the it, it sounds odd, but the, fu the, the funnest thing I've had to work on is just creating more buzz about me uh, through, through those commercials, going to do... Uh, media interviews which i've gotten really good at yeah. uh they sent for godaddy they sent me to new york to do this giant media tour and i got to go on the today show twice yeah. i've been on the today show now like three or four times uh and it what's what's awkward is each time i was interviewed by matt lauer and he's talking and we were talking about the godaddy commercial and how like you know it was all about kissing bar Raphael. so now it's like yeah. all awkward that that I was having a conversation with Matt Lauer about it because all that stuff that went on with him. Uh, but <laughs> that's another topic. Yeah. But, uh, but I have gotten really good at giving interviews. I just did one for Australia. I did a, I, there was a doc and then there was just a, a, a 60 second documentary done of me that just, just, just is so good. Yeah. And they're not, that company is, is like, trying to sell like a full length documentary for me. So that, right. that I'm hoping that I, comes out. I think I actually saw that on YouTube when I was, you know, getting some background for this interview. Yeah. Uh, so who were some of the coolest celebs you've worked with? I know you mentioned uh, James Franco and stuff, but yeah. people who really went out of their way to make you feel welcome and comfortable on set. I have a really cool story for you. So I worked one of the first few times that I worked with somebody somebody huge i worked with steven spielberg and leonardo DiCaprio at the same time on yeah. catch me if you can great and, movie and we were in the french class scene at the very first part of the film and uh in the in the sh in the scene uh S steven spielberg who is my ultimate inspiration for getting into acting because i'm a huge yeah. fan of back to the future which he produced and et and all et was another reason that i wanted to be an actor because it scared me when i was three years old but now yeah. i get it why like i don't understand why i was scared because it's, it's such a cool movie yeah uh and there there was something about that i was like why am i scared about it? anyway but then uh, leonardo dicaprio uh on the set of catch me if you can 
came came up to every single actor that he worked that he was working with and introduced himself and shook my hand and yeah. introduced himself like like we didn't know who he was and that was really cool and he yeah. and it, it it's kind of ironic because I think I don't know if they were together then but like a couple years later uh, I when I did the the GoDaddy commercial with Bar Raffaele, they they used to date so oh. I kind of were I I don't know if I uh, it's just weird just weird circumstance like that you know I got yeah. to work with both ends of that that relationship. Uh, I've gotten to meet Tom Hanks and his son, Colin Hanks, yeah. in different productions. Uh, I got directed by Tom Hanks in, in that movie where he directs it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about him going back to school with Julia yeah. Roberts was there. Uh, I've gotten to work with so many awesome people. It, the, the, it, it's the who's who of Hollywood. Vince Vaughn and Will Ferrell and Toby McGuire and Kirsten Dunst and Sam Raimi and all, James Franco and yeah. uh, you know uh, Kevin James and Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. I mean, it goes on and on. Hillary Duff. I mean, there's so many that it'd be uh, you know awesome to hear someone do a documentary where they go and interview each of those people and about working with me and see what they if they remember me. That would be cool. Yeah, I love where I worked on Transformers Three with Michael Bay and. The funniest thing with Michael Bay is I worked on the first Transformers and then apparently he requested me for the second one and I wasn't available. Uh-huh. And then he re- on the third one, he booked me for seven days straight so he, so he could have me for the third one. So That's cool. I'm, I, I'm kind of like an e- a human Easter egg. I don't know if you're into video games or these things, but they call a lot of people search for Easter eggs in movies and TV shows, like references yeah. to something. I'm like the human Easter egg in Hollywood. Yeah, you can be found in all kinds of places. Yeah. So the deeper you look, the more places. You've got, what, like more than 200 appearances at this point? Right. Or? Well, and and that and that's kind of like my dream coming true. Like, I, the reason that I got into Hollywood is I want to be the time traveler. I want to be Michael J. Fox going in the DeLorean, going you know, yeah. on an adventure. And I kind of, my whole career is kind of that experience because every set I go to, I got to be a, play a different character in a different time. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'm, I'm my character. I mean, I was set in the, in the, I worked on Ali or something. So I set in the sixties or the seventies or something, something before I was born, but I get, I get to go and play this character for that yeah. scene. And, and that's one of the coolest things about my job. So probably because of your look, you're often cast as the nerdy or geeky guy in most of your roles. Are right. you are you a nerd in real life? Are you into computers and games and pop culture and that sort of <laughs> oh, thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I love Spider Man and and Star Wars and uh, I I want to get into Game of Thrones because I, I didn't watch it when it was on, but I, so many people were into it. So I'm like I got to check that out. Uh, I play video games. I, I'm so excited for. I, I just started playing this game Grounded, where you get to basically play like honey i shrunk your kids oh yeah like you have to play like the kids and you have to like build a base within the backyard you have to, you have to fight you know insects yeah like di- like like they're dinosaurs i mean it's just so cool and it's just i i got i got passionate about certain games and I, i'm excited for games coming out i'm excited for the new consoles coming out uh uh and movies uh, uh, of course i mean I, anytime a spielberg or michael bay or or uh, J.J. Abrams' film comes out, I have to see it, you know? Yeah, uh, me Christopher too. Nolan. Yeah, that's, you know? what, that's what this channel's all about. I'm, I'm kind of trying to build a virtual Comic-Con sort of a feeling uh, yeah. on my channel where I talk about movies and TV and video games and all the things that I'm passionate about. Zachary Levi, who you've obviously worked with, defines right. a nerd as one whose unbridled passion for something defines who they are as a person without fear of judgment. So so what are right. you passionate about? Uh, well, let's see. I'm passionate about professional wrestling. And that sounds crazy, but like there are characters within a story and every every that there's story never ends because every every episode is a new is a new chapter and every uh they get to change their characters very slightly and they but they yeah. have to stay in character the whole time yeah uh and uh i love um I'm passionate about uh, aliens I'm, I'm fascinated about like I, i'd love to see like a new some more alien abduction shows or something like i i would be abducted i would would like to go I've, i'm fascinated by that the fact that there's a not kind of like the Bermuda Triangle, and there's another triangle up in Alaska, 
yeah. supposedly where a bunch of uh, there's a secret alien base inside a mountain in Alaska. Like, I want to go there and actually find it. Like, yeah, check cause it out. Because who wouldn't want to be the person that, that says, that, that officially gets, is the person that makes first contact. Like, that yeah. would be so cool. Because I, I think I would be a, a, a great ambassador for Earth. <laughs> yeah, Because I, I, I'm more of a, I, definitely more of a world peace and like, could we come in peace and we want to be peaceful type of person. Yeah. And, and, and not someone who would just go there to try to start a war with someone who you have no idea what why they came down here in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been really awesome talking to you, <laughs> Jesse. Uh, you know, I would love to sit here and talk to you about alien stories forever, but uh, yeah. we do have be- to... Fit- beam me up anytime. <laughs> we do have to fit this into a you know 20 or 30 minute segment here so thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure thanks for watching nerd crave if you haven't subscribed already please go ahead and subscribe we will be putting up more videos like this all the time hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time we put up a new video and hey guys stay classy